has walked people through why Fukushima was impossible. If you can open up link number 11. Okay. And, uh, and it's the real emergency backup systems. One thing that people don't realize about Fukushima and nuclear power in general is your backup systems, uh, the electrical backup systems, your, your, your diesel generators are pretty much only there to keep business as usual. Um, the real emergency backup systems at a nuclear facility don't need any electricity at all to function. Um, and that's why Fukushima was impossible. Um, the swapping of the external generators by the tsunami was irrelevant because the real emergency backup systems are driven by steam from the reactors themselves. So, in other words, when your power goes offline and your steam that's normally coming out of that reactor to turn your turbine, um, when, when you don't need that power and you can't turn that generator anymore because the reactor is putting out too much, um, that um, – and, and, Putting out too much, you'd be putting through an idle generator without overspinning it. Um, you enter an emergency backup mode, and that steam is used to spin cooling pumps to cool the reactor off. So losing your diesel generators to spin electrical cooling pumps is irrelevant if you're supposed to have backup steam turbine pumps that do the exact same job. Actually, that makes, quite, that so, makes a, that's brilliant. That makes a lot of sense. You're sure going to have yeah, plenty of steam. There's no way Fukushima could have. You know, when Fukushima blew up, when Fukushima got hit by the tsunami, and everybody, you know, I heard on the news that a nuclear plant got hit by a tsunami, my thought was, was why, why does that matter? Because I understood reactor systems good enough so that I knew that that couldn't cause any problem at all. The only thing you're going to do when, uh, when, when you kick off all electricity to that nuclear power plant, what is supposed to happen is the steam from that reactor is supposed to start powering pumps rather than turn a generator. Well, the problem is is that at, at, uh, at reactors uh, 1, 2, and 3, all fueled reactors, those systems activated immediately, just like they should when the generator went off, when the generator is cut off. The trouble is is that within 11 minutes at reactor 1, that system shut itself off, and the only way that it can shut itself off is if it, if, it, if it gets a powered command from the controller to shut itself off. Well, then here we get into Stuxnet. This Magna BSP company came out of Demona, Israel, where Stuxnet was written. And, and if you, uh, if you uh, um, go back to uh, – let me see here. I've got, I've got the links for this here. I've got to get back to that page. Oh, I'm not on that page anymore. Anyway, there, oh, yeah, there's, there's a link. Okay, it's number 20. Stuxnet is documented. It's number 20. Yes, yeah, Stuxnet is documented to have been, have been uh, written by the Israeli Defense Forces. Those those three links are critical because everybody has been saying, well, we don't know where Stuxnet came from. Well, the Israelis have bragged about and celebrated and videos on YouTube and everything about writing Stuxnet and destroying Iran's nuclear program with it. Well, Four months later, after after uh, after Japan um, offers to enrich uranium for, for Iran, out of the exact same within within a mile of where Stuxnet was written, here comes a security company and gets access to the heart of Fukushima. Well, Japan obviously is an enemy now, and, and they need to be taken out every bit, bit as bad as Iran. This uh, this uh, security company, I am you know I you know because I didn't get an admission from them directly, um, you know, you'll never get an admission that they actually stuck a, a flash drive in one of those uh, PLCs to infect uh, Fukushima with this virus. Um, but I did get the proof in an article written in the Jerusalem Post that uh, that they had a full-time unauthorized data connection to, that, to the heart, to the SCADA system in that facility via a connection that they had made to one of their cameras, one of their nuke cameras in that facility. So here we have the security company having a totally unauthorized data connection into the heart of Fukushima, into the reactor rooms, and all those SCADA systems are interlinked. Um, you know, and, and it could have probably jumped out of Fukushima and gone over to some of the other reactors that acted up after the tsunami too, which is, which is impossible. But they had other reactors uh, have problems. Um, and, and, and it's virtually impossible. Well, 
these emergency systems activated at Fukushima. That's the bottom line. At all three reactors, they activated. At, at reactor one, they cut off after 11 minutes. And reactor one promptly went into meltdown because if you cut off those emergency systems um, within within the three hours of shutting a reactor down, um, the reactor will even even though it's been scrammed and it's 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 not doing anything to perpetuate a chain reaction. Uh, just the, uh, the 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 breakdown of of, of some of the uh, highly radioactive isotopes will keep that reactor hot and keep it generating heat. So you need those cooling pumps running to prevent a meltdown, even though the reactor is shut off. At reactor one, those that system was told to shut off outside the control of the operators, and the operators couldn't get it to turn back on 11 minutes after the generators cut off. With uh, with reactor with reactor two, those systems shut down three hours after after. Um, after the electricity was lost. And at Reactor 3, those systems shut down on day two. They shouldn't ever shut down because the only – you know how a semi functions. Um, it has air pressure, and as long as it has air pressure, the brakes are off. Right. When you release, it, when you release air pressure on a semi, when your brakes are failed, um, that means that they're on. If you have a brake problem with a semi – those brakes are on. With a brake problem with the car, they're off. But with a brake problem with a semi, that truck is so dangerous that its default mode is the brakes have to be told to shut off. This emergency backup system at Fukushima actually needs a powered command to keep it from activating. And the fact that it did activate means that in that facility, something still had power and fed those valves the signal they needed to shut off. Well, Magna BSP bragged to the Jerusalem Post uh, after Reactor 3 had exploded that they maintained a full-time data connection to their cameras all the way through in that reactor. And that's 24, uh, number 24 for those listening. Yes. they, right. they uh, I, that, that page is my, my Internet's down right now. It's a long story. But I've been having lots of problems since I typed this article. And this, I, it's a long story. I don't want to get into that. Yeah, okay. Um, with uh, – so – I just got to kind of wing it now. But uh, the only way that, okay, so here we have power dead of this facility. Batteries die in eight hours, and, and oh, there's, there's so many things. They actually brought in generators from off-site before the batteries, the backup batteries, to turn the cooling pumps died. They have backup batteries there. They actually brought in off-site power. And they had sufficient power available there within eight hours of that. The roads were in perfect shape because there was no earthquake. They managed to drive these huge generators in. And when they tried to hook them up, the switch gear would not let them um, turn on the power to the facility. Well, all these all these systems are linked in to uh, to the SCADA system that can be infected by Stuxnet. So here's a system telling them that they can't activate this power that they brought in. You can't get the switches to work. The only way that that can happen is is is, is the controller telling it not to activate. Um, there are so many aspects to this story. So we have the regular, uh, the standard uh, uh, steam-powered backups not working. We have the electrical backups not working. And the generators, one of those generators actually kept running, and one was enough to keep that facility safe. It kept running even despite... The other one's cutting off, which never got flooded, but because they're in the turbine room, that's another story. You have to read the article uh, at Fukushima, at Jimstone Freelance at Fukushima, or forward slash Fukushima HTML. You have to read that article to, to get all this. Um, but here we have a, a facility where power's been brought in, they can't hook it up. They got a generator working. The switch gear is telling it you can't use it. They've got emergency backup systems that are functioning, and they shut off all by themselves. Well, with a data link leaving, and, and so here is a scenario that that I think really happened at Fukushima. And I, I'm just going to read this because I've got it really well written. Um, I'm going to read it straight off the site. Okay. Um, you got, I've got the uh, backup here running. I honestly believe that Japan is being held a nuclear hostage. It all makes sense. 
Number one, Japan offers to enrich uranium for Israel's great state in Iran. Number two, immediately Israel sets up front companies masquerading as security companies, and one of them succeeds in getting a security contract at a Japanese nuclear facility. Four months later, the Demona Dozen shows up, and under the cover of a security contract, it's unlimited access to the heart of Fukushima. They plant the virus and sell real cameras outside the facility and functional, poorly disguised new cameras inside the facility. In addition to this, they install unauthorized data connection to allow control of all the guts of the facility via the virus. And they admitted this to, an, uh, to this connection in an article in the, in the Jerusalem Post. Um, after installing Stuxnet and the nuke state scram, Israel waits for one of the many natural quakes, which is how they wrote, I wrote the article. I only came up with this information about, about the possibility of creating earthquakes this morning. The tsunami comes in, uh, swamps Stuxnet, okay, Israel waits for one of the many natural quakes in Japan to provide cover for the tsunami bomb, and they already have the nuke at the bottom of the Japan trench. VLF communications are established for the bomb to penetrate the water. David and Demona get seismic readings from Japan, 6.67 in progress. Boom. Tsunami comes in and swaps the Stuxnet infected power plant, and direct video feed from legitimate cameras they installed gets back to David and Demona via a totally unauthorized channel, and David knows just when to cut the generators off. Others on the team do all they can to counteract the emergency measures taken by the employees at Fukushima who are unaware an attack is taking place and do not understand why everything is going crazy. Israeli Prime Minister calls Japan and says, take that for offering to help Iran. And you know, there are five more nukes in the ocean off the coast of Japan, and we are going to set those off and destroy your coastal cities. If you not, do not forget all about that 6.67 and say it was a 9 to cover for tsunami effects. And now we are going to make your people demand you move away from nuclear power so you can never threaten us like that again. We are going to blow up Fukushima, and you're just going to go along with whatever story we tell you. So David and his pals close all the valves for the reactors via the remote link they admitted to installing and put them to full throttle to melt them down while the virus keeps control room readouts displaying false info like nothing is going on, even though the place is coming apart. After enough mayhem ensues to revive plausibility, they set off the plastic nukes and blow the place sky high. And that is how Reactor 4 is building 7. That's how you get a reactor that has been completely disassembled and cannot do anything to explode. And even though, I, you know, I didn't get every single detail, you know, I think I've got enough because the seismic data proves beyond a doubt that the quake was not what we were told and was, in fact, an inland 6.8, which was calculated by that higher than the 6.67 that, you know, that we talked about because the, 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 the seismic station is never going to be right at the epicenter, so they triangulated it to a 6.8. Um, numerous reference sources prove that Stuxnet really was written by Israel. And Japan really did offer to enrich uranium for Iran, and Israel has been documented to have already destroyed one nuclear program in Iran, and probably did. Uh, and Japan contributing to Iran's nuclear future would have made them just as much an enemy to Israel as Iran. Israel would want them taken out. It is documented that a team from Israel with history only consisting of working in Israeli defense got unlimited access to a Japanese nuclear facility, which then exploded. Reactor 4 had been defueled and proven disassembled, and therefore no explosion was there was possible. What should have happened at Reactor 4, if anything at all? The fuel pool should have melted down and caught fire once the water boiled off from a lack of recirculation at worst and badly contaminated the, the, the containment structure. Nothing else. And, you know, and, the, and, and that's the thing is the inside containment walls are like over eight feet, 8 feet thick, probably 12 feet thick. I never could get the specification for that. But they blew so badly that Reactor 4 is in danger of falling over. And I'd like to know how that happened. Are you still there? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. I'm just letting and, you and know the, so we get this okay. all in. I want to get this and all then, in. And uh, then the Japanese government is going along with the story of a scientifically proven false 9.0 earthquake. You can see the pictures. You can see the seismograms. Nothing happened there other than a tsunami. There is, no, there is a reason why they're going along with this story, and my guess is that Israel has made threats to wipe out Japan's coastal cities with additional tsunamis if the government of Japan speaks a word of what went on 
there should be no reason for Japan to go along with this, this crazy story other than a continued threat. Is it not interesting that this quake happened, you know, at the bottom of the Japan Trench? I only found out that it really, they, they, they were saying that it happened at the bottom of the Japan Trench, but when you map out um, what, what, uh, where, where this nuke actually went off by, by, by their star in the ocean, it's not in the Japan Trench. It's about 20 miles inland, you know, closer to the land from the Japan Trench. Um, now, here we get the kicker. The Department of Homeland Security um, canceled a meeting about Stuxnet at Takedown Con. Um, Takedown Con is, is a conference where it's an industrial conference where, uh, where industrial facility operators get to know or, or learn about how to secure their facilities. The Department of Homeland Security has, has um, advised the cancellation of all discussion of Stuxnet. And my belief for the reason for that is because they want to keep the threat alive. They want this thing out there so our reactors are vulnerable to it, so they can get their disasters here. And, and I guess, you know, we're getting kind of close to the end of the program, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let people go at that. Consider that. We need such a massive awareness on this subject just to prevent a disaster in this country because they're not picking favorites. They want dominance. They want control. And it doesn't matter who they hurt or what they do to get it. America is a little bit too much of a rebel for them. They're pretty upset with this country. It didn't just fall over like Europe did. Uh, we are the last stand. And, and they, I, I really believe they have a plan for us that isn't pretty at all. And so basically that's, uh, that's my word. That's what I had to say. Now you say they, um. Oh, the elite. The, it's, you know, I want to, I want to, uh, 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 not allude to Zionists and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, you know, what that means. I want to, I want to keep away from that as much as possible, even though that is what we're talking about, you know. Um, it but is, it might, you know, probably, I might, you know I, I picture, uh, we'll, we'll say the Zionists being a more of the military arm of this group that run, you know, want, want oh, no, 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 no. I've been inside that community for two years. It's every last one of them. You'll get your occasional good ones like Mike Rivero or, or, uh, or your occasional good one like, uh, like, uh, uh, who is, who is the guy that just died of cancer? Um, <laughs> oh gosh, I can't believe it. Aaron Russo. Yeah. Aaron Russo was a good one. Not all of these people are off the edge, but I'll tell you right now about 95% of them are. They are on the same sheet of paper. And it doesn't matter if they're orthodox or reform or conservative or anything else there, uh, or, or Sephardic. They're all on the same sheet of paper. I sat on their meetings and, and, and heard them brag about, about uh, having control of the government and, and the medical system, the educational system, and the media and the communications and everything else. They have us in the bag. They've got it. They know it. And, and uh, you know, what can I say? Uh, I, I like using the a, term because he... For me, it's not about an ethnicity, or it's not. It's about it's a state government. All governments are evil. Yeah. Well, it's 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 yeah. What we've got here is 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 a is a group that wants world dominance at any cost. Right. Right. And this. And and, and it is and it is political because you know when you when face to face they're really nice and among their own group they're really they're decent people like anyone else. But you know every group tends to have its tendency towards dominating everything, and and they've had a lot of success. Yeah, well, uh, well, uh, we're, we're at the end, and so uh, you're going to keep up this page with some references on your page, so people who listen to the show can go to the website, jimstonefreelance.com, yes, uh, and there'll be some link to take you through, so people can follow the bouncing balls. You may update it as time goes, but this way they can yeah, at least they can follow it, and it will uh, be rebroadcast, like I mentioned, and uh, the archives will go up and. Uh, you know, thousands more will be aware of this, and uh, they can get a hold of you through your website at jimstonefreelance.com, while you and your website still exist, that is. Uh, yeah. are, are, are you, I've had some trouble. Yeah, so I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, you gave me a list of things to do, so I started to call people and let them know that I wasn't planning suicide, I don't have cancer, and, uh, and whatnot, because uh, uh, this should be known prior to anything happening. <laughs> So uh, I'm yeah. uh, I'm hoping it doesn't come to that, but 
Uh, I, I'm I, I'm glad you uh, you did the show. It, uh, you have some very good data that has to take, be answered if someone's going to say no. So, but we will talk again. Uh, uh, maybe we could uh, uh, continue on another show. But Jim Stone, thank you for your time and your effort. Yes, thank thank you very much. You know, I was a little bit brief, um, but I kind of wanted this to be intense, and so uh, uh, maybe next time we can be a little bit more relaxed. Maybe. All righty, so hang in there. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.